Tell us how the Guardians Holiday Special came about and why were you keen to make it happen? Well, I'll, you know, being honest, I loved the um, the Star Wars Holiday Special when I was a kid. Now, a lot of people don't like it. They don't think it was the greatest work of art that's ever existed. But as a child, I adored it. And I wanted to do something, you know, that was just off the wall for Marvel, for the MCU, and do a, a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. And this started maybe, like, it was right while we were still in post-production for Volume 2. So this was many years ago that I brought this up to Kevin Feige wanting to do this. You know, not too surprisingly, Kevin's like, oh, that's a great idea. And so I went off and wrote it in a very short amount of time and we started developing it and uh, and we were going to put it. It was before Disney Plus. We we're actually going to put it on ABC at the time. And uh, and then one thing led to the next and things kept getting pushed. And finally, during the shooting of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, we would had the opportunity to shoot this. And it it was great because we had all the big sets. We had the enormous four-story Bowie spaceship um, that we had in, in the movie. We had the entire set of Nowhere with all of the hundreds of extras there. Um, and we had these great sets that we could use to shoot something that was a pretty intimate tale. And I think Guardians is, uh, Holiday Special is very unique for the MCU because it is about just the relationships. There's not a big bad guy that they're out there fighting. It's truly a sort of Christmas special that's a family comedy. Does the special connect to the Guardian story we will see in the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, or is it standalone? Definitely, this the, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special takes place between Thor and Love and Thunder and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. There's a lot of important things that you learn from the holiday special. Um, number one, you learn that they have a telekinetic dog named Cosmo, who's now a part of their team. Number two, you learn that they live... Uh, inside of uh, nowhere, which they've bought. It's a giant head of a you know disembodied god that they've bought from um, the collector. That's their home base now. And they've saved all these refugees that have come and live with them. Um, and number three, you learn a very special relationship between two of the characters that we you know will learn as, as we see the show. So it's an opportunity to see a lot of different things. But also, I think it's really important that we see how some of our characters have grown. When we last saw Mantis, she was this, you know, character who was beaten down by Ego, who sort of kept her as a slave. And she was not very outspoken. But now we see how she's become a part of this family of the Guardians. And she's much more willing to state her opinion. She's a much, you know, more developed character that she's grown over these past few years. And she's become best friends with Drax. Um, and he gets on her nerves constantly. But she also loves him. These are all things that we'll see a lot more of in Volume 3. Uh, so it's it's I think it's a fun way to, to give the, the audience a little taste. You wrote both. You wrote and directed the special. How do you come up with the idea of the story? Um, well, I first I came up with when I was when I was coming up with the ideas, I came up with the idea of just wanting to do a, a holiday special. I love Christmas myself. Christmas is really important to me. It's a time when I feel a lot of love for my family members. I give lots of gifts. Um, I get lots of gifts. I love all of it. Uh, it's the warmest, best time of the year for me. Uh, so I wanted to do a holiday special with the Guardians, and I told this to Kevin Feige a long time ago. Um, and we started we started working on it, and then it just instantly came up. What what is it about? How can we do this story? And originally, it it, it was going to be a two stories about Mantis wanting to give a good gift to her brother Peter, and also this sort of action oriented thing. And I realized that I didn't care about the action oriented thing. I only carried I only cared about the family part of it, the part of the Guardians as family, as found family, and the fact that she wanted to give Kevin Bacon as a gift to Peter. And she's an alien. She doesn't understand like what's what's right or what's wrong in certain ways. So um I found that to be what was really fun. Speaking of Kevin, how did you approach Kevin Bacon with the idea of playing himself? I mean, I've known Kevin for a long time. Kevin played um, a bad guy in my movie Super with Rain Wilson and Elliot Page. And I, uh, I, I called him up and I said, hey, you know how, uh, you know, Peter Quill loves you in the MCU because they brought up 
Kevin Bacon a lot in the different Guardian stories. And he said, yes. I said, well, I want to do this this holiday special in which they want to give Peter Quill a Christmas gift. And the, the Christmas gift is going to be you. And he laughed his butt off and then said, absolutely. And he was in almost immediately. This is the first time a live band has been in the Guardian story. What made the old 97s band perfect for this? Tell us a little about their style. Well... I love the old 97s. They're they're literally my favorite band in the entire world. And I've been going to see them in concert since I was a kid in the 90s. Um, so when it came an, op- an opportunity to, you know, have a, a, a band in the movie, I thought that they would be perfect because I know they're game for anything. And, you know, I had this song that I started writing called I Don't Know What Christmas Is, But Christmas Time Is Here, sung from the point of view of an alien who uh, who is trying to make sense of what he's heard about Christmas. He sort of played this game of telephone about what Christmas is. And so uh, I knew that, you know, Rhett has such a great way with humor in his songs. He has such a great way with just finding a real, you know, beautiful melody that he would be the great partner for that. And so I went to him to write the song originally. He did such a great job with that that we then decided to put the whole band in alien costumes and make them the band on the planet. And they were great. Are the songs they perform original? And did you write the songs with them? And tell us about that collaboration. I, I, uh, you know, so I wrote the one song with Rhett Miller. Um, I don't know what Christmas is, but Christmas time is here. And that's the song they play at the beginning. The alien band plays. The song at the end is a song um, which is uh, which the old 97s had previously written, but obviously hadn't recorded with Kevin Bacon. And I thought it would be a great song that talks about, you know, family and love and what Christmas really is to me, you know. Um, and that would be a great song to, to have Kevin Bacon sing. And one of the pluses of having Kevin in the movie is that he plays a guitar and he sings. And he's a really talented musician. So I knew that uh, this was just going to be a great meeting of the minds. What can viewers look forward to when they stream this holiday special? Well, I think they can uh, look. Uh, I think viewers can look forward to a great deal of holiday magic in the Christmas special. I love the holidays, and I love the Marvel fans. And this is my gift to the Marvel fans for the holidays. So I get to have all the things I love together. I hope it's something that whole families can sit down and watch together. Grandma will love it. The kids will love it. It really is for the entire family. And uh, and I can't wait to, to have all the people enjoy it around the world. 